Hello and welcome to this Wex Photo Video Masterclass with me, Tom Mason. We're going to be out looking for winter wildlife and giving you some tips and tricks for improving and developing your shooting out on location. Coming up in the next couple of videos, we're going to be going out on location to multiple different areas to talk about winter wildlife photography out in the field. We're going to be talking about the equipment that we use for it and how to get the best out of your camera when you're working in the field. You'll be coming with me on assignment to shoot some different pictures and hopefully give you a boatload of tips for your own work and photography in the future. So before we get started on the wildlife photography content, I thought I'd just take a moment to introduce myself and give you a little bit of background about myself as a photographer, my shooting style and the sort of images that I produce. Now, as a wildlife photographer, I think one of the greatest things you have to have is a real love for the natural world. And for me, it started back when I was like eight years old. I just wanted to be out hiking, walking, moving around the woods, watching wildlife and nature. You know, at the time, I just had my binoculars, didn't even have a camera. And it was just the act of getting out and seeing birds, mammals, and all sorts of things that inspired me to be out in the natural world just all the time. I was literally out from dawn till dusk when I was younger and just moving around the farm that I grew up on, always hunting down different birds and wildlife, just was everything I wanted to do. I actually got into photography a little bit by chance. I was reading one of my bird books that had a section on photography and suddenly thought it'd be a great idea to have a camera to share some of the things that I was seeing. That year when I picked up a camera, it completely changed my life. And once I had a camera in my hand, I just knew that was what I was gonna do um, every day following. And ever since, it is all that has been on my mind. You know, every day I wake up excited to get out and make different pictures of wildlife. I wake up in the middle of the night and draw out pictures and think about different images. Sometimes I stop the car on the way to the pub because they're just something incredible that I've got to make a photograph of. Once you get into wildlife photography, it honestly will just take over your entire life, but it is truly fantastic, and I wouldn't give it up for the world. I've been lucky enough now as a professional photographer to travel all over, working with some great clients, be it conservation organizations in the UK, or you know, tourist boards abroad. I've traveled to the Falklands, the Amazon rainforest, the Okavango Delta, the Arctic earlier this year. You know, so many places that as a youngster, I would have been absolutely over the moon to know I would get to. And largely it's been through having a camera in my hand and making wildlife images that's allowed me to get to those places. And that's why I absolutely love my job. Now, one thing that a lot of people ask me about is, um, Tom, you know, how do you get started in becoming a professional wildlife photographer? For many of you, you might be just getting started making images at all and not be thinking about it. But there are a couple of tips that are not only useful for those who want to go pro, but also for actually just getting you off on the right foot for making images yourself. You know, when I got started, I didn't have much money, anything like that. You know, I was a youngster, picked up my first camera. And for many people who might see wildlife photography as a bit of a difficult thing to get into because it's quite expensive and everything like that, don't worry about it. You can start small, grow into it. It's absolutely great. And I think it's something phenomenally enjoyable to do. And I just think that anyone, whatever camera you've got, can really enjoy some wildlife photography. Now, when I first got started taking images, I would go out and just photograph whatever I saw. Maybe it's some blue tits, gray tits, maybe I'd see a woodpecker, maybe I'd see a fox once in a while. You'd make single pictures, a couple of images, and be happy with it. The problem with it is it doesn't build this cohesive set of shots, something that's pitchable, saleable, that you can give to someone. It's just one or two images of a certain subject. And so as a group, it doesn't work that well. Once I started to get into the process of shooting projects, going after a specific subject, researching it, getting out and photographing the same thing over and over again to build up a nice body of work around a certain subject, 
was when I really saw my images develop and my photography hit a level where I could actually sell it to organizations and companies. Something that certainly gave me my first jobs as a wildlife photographer and some of the things that I was allowed to, you know, put forward to magazines and things like that to actually get those first paying jobs. Now, of course, if you're just getting started in wildlife photography, that might seem a long way off, but the process of consistency and working with a subject is something that will put you in real good stead to making great images. Wildlife photography isn't this kind of luck thing that sometimes people think. You're lucky because you've come across wildlife and you get this great picture. It's a lot more than that. There's a lot of, you know, practice research that goes into it to make sure you're there in the right location to get the images. You're going to spend a lot of time sat at home thinking, where am I going to go? What am I going to photograph? How am I going to get close? And all of this, when put, you know, consistently in effort towards one subject, is largely going to improve your photography much greater than if you just go out every day and look for random different subjects. So when it comes to wildlife photography, of course, location is absolutely key. We're here on the Norfolk coast that's one of my absolute favourite places to get out and photograph wildlife, especially in the winter season. You know, the whole way around the UK, there is an absolute plethora of different areas that you can visit and make pictures. There are hundreds upon hundreds of different nature reserves and locations that produce untold options for wildlife photographers to make great and stunning pictures no matter where you are. The reason I like the Norfolk coast is because it's close to where I grew up, it's a place that I've visited many many times and I know the locations here. Something that's a real benefit when you're actually getting out to make pictures, it makes it much easier to get closer to your subjects if you know roughly where things are going to be. When it comes to actually finding locations and getting started, well there's a lot of prep work that goes into that. Of course, the basics of just looking for great nature reserves is there, but it doesn't kind of guarantee you certain subjects. Of course, wildlife is moving all the time. It doesn't always settle in the same places. Of course, it does revisit certain locations, but if you want to keep up with it, sometimes um, you need to keep ahead of it, keeping up with local notice boards, bird groups, and things like that to give you information of where subjects might have been. Of course, at the moment, things are migrating through, so we're seeing different species turn up at different times. So you've got to consider all these things when you're planning a trip to get out and photograph uh, specific subjects. I tend to do trips at different times of the year, depending on what I'm looking to photograph, and just revisit locations at very specific time frames to actually make images within my kind of calendar of wildlife photography going through. I think something that people struggle with is the idea that you're just going to turn up and wildlife's in front of you. It's sadly not going to happen like that. Throughout my career I may have visited locations 10, 20, 30 times to come up with a handful of pictures that I'm truly happy with. Of course everything's changing all the times at location, the weather might be wrong or you know the subjects just aren't there on that day so you really do have to keep coming back and putting the time on. Different locations can throw up amazing sightings that you might not even consider if you weren't a wildlife photographer. Most people would walk past that random bit of scrubland at the end of the road or you know that old train line that seems to be overgrown. But as a wildlife photographer, these throw up incredible opportunities for making pictures. A lot of the time, especially if you're starting out, I'd actually recommend that some of these more wild places aren't the best. Here, Wildlife is going to be more scared of you. It's going to require a higher level of field craft to get close to it. And so if you're only getting started with wildlife photography, it might not be the best. Areas like parklands or places that have huge numbers of visitors can be really great for wildlife photography because the animals are just much more, you know, at home with people walking around. It's going to mean that you can settle in a location, photograph the subjects, and even if your field craft isn't perfectly home, you're not completely going to spook everything off and not get any images that day. 
something that's really important if you want to hone your craft for when you're coming out to more expansive locations to where actually making those mistakes could be the difference between getting any shots at all or going home with some absolute keepers. So certainly something to keep in mind. You know, as you develop as a wildlife photographer, I'd recommend that everyone keeps a log of different locations that they've been to, places that work well and those that didn't, maybe where you've sighted things and where you haven't to revisit them again. This is the sort of information that I've collected over years and years, and I revisit all the time, that helps me be consistent as a wildlife photographer. Especially as a professional, I wanna be getting images on the regular, not randomly if I get lucky. It has to be have some consistency to it. So having plans and you know good research in place certainly improves that when you're working in the field. But you know, Norfolk will always be somewhere that I just absolutely love to come back to. Be it crawling along the beaches or walking through the salt marshes or the dunes, it's just a fantastic place to get out and enjoy wildlife. And so I think we're gonna head off, explore a bit more, and see what else we can find. So, so far, given a bit of an introduction to me, and we've talked about locations, but before we get out with the camera, there is one really important thing to consider before you get cracking with some wildlife photography, and that's the ethics of it, and making sure that you're doing the best you can to be considerate about the wildlife that you're getting out and photographing. Now a lot of the places and animals that we try and get close to can easily be spooked and frightened. And of course, at different times of the year, they can be a lot more vulnerable than at others. It's really important that as wildlife photographers, we're doing our best to make sure that our subject always comes first. You know, a picture is fantastic, but it's definitely not worth ever putting your subject at any risk to make that image. Sometimes people will use poor practice in wildlife photography. There's horrible notations of what some people do, be it spooking birds to get them to fly off, all the way down to actually taking chicks out of um, nests and stuff like that. There's a whole host of horrible practices that I don't want anyone to be entering into. At the end of the day, you should be always considering the fact of, am I actually having an impact on this subject? Is it going to cause it a problem? Is it time for me to step back and walk away and just let it get on with its natural behavior? It's a difficult line to walk a lot of the time between getting close enough to get those frame filling pictures and are you actually disturbing it? And it does take a lot of time and practice to understand and watch wildlife enough to know some of the signs that you're freaking out. It might be a subtle movement that they keep running away from you further away, a very obvious one, to more noises that they're making, you know, um, small indications that they're spooked or frightened, or they're giving warning symbols. These are the sort of things that's really good to um, try and pick up on when you're out photographing, to give you that better kind of ethical basis for making your pictures. Sometimes there's gonna be some subjects that we just definitely shouldn't be getting too near to. You know, we shouldn't be going really super near birds in the nesting period and stuff like that. Something that's not as much of a problem uh, in the winter time. But of course, mammals and other things are easily susceptible um, to too much pressure from photographers and wildlife watchers in general as well. Some have flown hundreds and thousands of miles on migration and they just need to feed in order to keep themselves alive. And so if you're constantly pressurizing them and pushing them off of their feeding ground to get those pictures, you're gonna actually be causing them a great deal of harm. And that's something we definitely need to be considerate about. Now, of course, the way we approach wildlife is important in this. You know, I'll talk more about the field craft of making sure that we're concealing ourselves, getting down low, minimizing our impact, and everything from, you know, just wearing drab colors to, um, you know, just taking a slow approach to our subjects is all things that certainly make a difference. I think one of my biggest considerations and something that many who are getting started in wildlife photography will forget to do is that the 
move back is just as important as the approach. You can have spent hours really working hard, crawling on your front, slowly getting into position for your subjects to make those perfect pictures. You're elated by it, super happy that you've nailed those perfect shots. And then what do you do? You stand up and walk back straight away. You're immediately gonna freak the wildlife out that you've just spent two hours trying to get close to. So it's always worth considering that the way that you go in also needs to be the way you come back out. Be considerate the whole time and then you can celebrate once you're back at the car looking at those perfect pictures. I think something that should always be the take home is that it's better to go out into nature and come back with no images, knowing that you've left no degradation or no problems for the wildlife that you've encountered. You know, a picture means nothing to me if you know that it's actually caused wildlife harm. And I think truly, if you actually are a wildlife photographer, that's a concept that you'll take very much to heart. And I'm sure that all of you watching who are um, wanting to learn more about wildlife photography will be really keen on making sure that they have the best practices when they're working out in the field. So today's video has just been a quick introduction to myself as your tutor for this wildlife photography course and some of the kind of precursors to getting out for great wildlife images, be it looking for locations or making sure that we're approaching it in the most ethical way possible. In the next video, we're gonna be talking all about the equipment that I use for wildlife photography and some of the gear that's really gonna help you out in the field, be it my wellies all the way through to the cameras and the gear that I use every single day before we head out into the field, the rest of the series, to go make some great pictures. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next one and you'll join me soon for some more wildlife photography.